This program contains scenes of nonsensical garbage and coarse language and is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, my pumpkins. Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa, and as you can see, I'm very much alive, and we love that for me. I am so excited for today's video because I have been waiting for a proper <laughs> Beauty and the Beast collection to come out. There have been some that came out in the past from Sigma and Carol, or AKA Larock, and I've always kind of felt like, all right, eh, 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 and I just, I don't know, never really pulled the trigger or anything like that. So when I saw that ColourPop was releasing it, there was gonna be a 50% chance that it was going to look like just the same boring ass neutral palette because that usually is the case when it comes to IPs. So much to my surprise, I actually think this palette's pretty cute. This collection actually in a whole is pretty adorable and it made me that much more excited to try it out. Now, this collection was sent to me in PR, but regardless if this was sent to me or not, I'm gonna give you my full honest thoughts because that's how we do around here. And of course, if you want to know about any of these products, like the direct links or whatever, everything you need to know will be listed in the description box below. Go check it out or don't. I really don't give a f whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'm not your mom. Just shop responsibly. All right. That's all I'm going to say. That said, let me tell you a little bit about this collection first. Now the whole bundle retails for $99, which is $121 value. The seven piece set comes with the Beauty and the Beast eyeshadow palette, two pressed powder blushes, one super shock highlighter, one enchanted rose lip mask, and two lip duos. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I created uh, this wonderful weird two-tone look that I can't wait to uh, wear at work today. <laughs> I do have meetings. I don't give a f So let's see how many people ask me, do you have two different eyeshadows on? Let's see how many people have the balls to ask me that. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how I created this and I'm going to give you my overall thoughts about what I liked and what I didn't like and what I think could have been improved or, you know, what have you. Because while I do overall like this collection, there are things that could have been tweaked a little bit better. So let's start with actually my favorite thing and it's this, it's the lip mask. So the lip mask retails for $12. This is a leave-on lip mask that locks in moisture and softens lips with an enchanting rose flavor. This is great. First of all, it's adorable. ColourPop's lip masks are usually some of the cutest items ever. I think the one that I like cannot stop thinking about and I wish they still made it, I don't think they still make it anymore, is the Alice in Wonderland one. That. I felt like smelled like a Dunkaroos. Oh my God, it was just blast in the past. It was so good. But what I like about these lip masks is that they actually really last for a very long time. They're really good at nighttime or when I'm just being a dry ass bitch by my desk and I just need a little bit of hydration and I somehow misplace my chapstick. These come in handy. I also love that it comes in a little rosebud. I was about to say prolapse. Um, because <laughs> to me, that's what rosebud means, not what a normal rosebud would be, just the most disgusting version of one. <sighs> anyway, so I really love, <laughs> I really love that it looks like that. It's so cute. Uh, no, but I, I just think it's really nice. It says it smells like rose. It kind of has a sweet smell to me. If you didn't know this, or if you are new here, hi, my name is Teresa. I'm a garbage person. And I didn't really have the best sense of smell until I lost some weight. And now I could kind of smell things, which is pretty funny. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I could kind of smell stuff, but like, I don't really know what I'm smelling. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I know it's a stupid superpower, right? But anyway, it has a very nice sweet smell and it doesn't feel funky or taste funky on the lips. Can I say, is it rose? I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like it smells very florally. I really don't. I feel like it smells very sweet if anything. So yeah, it's like, I feel like it's more of like a cake, like a cakey kind of a vibe. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't smell florally. It doesn't smell like grandma's vagina. It just <laughs> smells like I'm in a f bakery. And if I keep doing this, I'm going to eat it. So we're gonna have to put this down, but this is great. If you are looking for a good lip mask, that's going to hydrate, give you a little teeny tiny bit of color, like just a little bit, nothing too much. Kind of basically looks like your lips, but better. This is awesome. This is probably one of my favorite things from this whole collection. And I wish they would make more cute like this. So kudos to you. That's awesome. So let's move on to the blush next. So there are two blushes in this collection. They both retail for $14 a piece. You have Mrs. Potts. You got the mom. And this is a very beautiful, light, cool pink color. And then you got her son, Chip. 
which Chip is described as a beautiful warm brown shade. All right, so here's the deal. I normally like ColourPop's blushes. I think they're a really nice formula, especially for the price point. I really don't have anything bad to say about it. But Mrs. Potts though, bitch was light. <laughs> like, and I get it. Listen, I'm uncooked chicken, but I felt like I had to build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. And to the point where I feel like, uh, I, I could see it. I can kind of see it. It's like, it's right there. But that was after like a good, like fucking seven or eight layers. Like I really was just, please make me look like an 80s truck stop hooker. Like that's what I want. <laughs> that's what I wanted. And I felt like I couldn't do that. And now it just looks more like subtle, which I know people like subtle blush moments, but I'm not that bitch. I want to look like a garish clown and I just couldn't do that with this. So I don't know if this is something that I would really just, I don't know, fuck with on the everyday. Like it's fine. It's good. But like, I just, I don't know. I wanted it to be more pinky, more pronounced. And I hate that it's not more pronounced. It's like, it's just okay. I feel like ColourPop has better pink blushes out there that definitely pack a punch and I don't feel like I'm jerking myself off trying to like fucking build up the color. So this was my least favorite out of the two. This one though, Chip, Chip is interesting and Chip is a good fucking bronzer color for this uncooked chicken bitch, okay? Because I actually really love how this looks. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Jones Road bronzer, that like dusty rose color, probably a hair warmer. I don't know, there's just something about this that I initially thought, all right, this is, meh, this is like not gonna be great for me, but this is fucking perfect though. This one, I feel like I had instant pigmentation compared to the pink one. So I didn't need to build up this product at all. And I loved how it blends out because it just kind of gives you this very beautiful, like soft kind of a moment, which is so funny. Cause I know I literally just said a couple seconds ago, I want to be a garish clown. Give me truck stop hooker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I still fucking stand by that, okay? But when it comes to bronzer, I don't really like anything like too harsh because it just, I don't know, it looks like I just took out a fucking Sharpie marker and just started like, <laughs> I just started drawing all over my fucking face. Like I just, mm -mm, not a good look. But this though provides a nice amount of warmth without it being too much. I don't know, like I feel, I feel cute. Like this is something that I would fuck with on a day to day. This would be a perfect, perfect summer blush or like kind of a bronzer, right? Like a blush bronzer moment. Like this is awesome. I fucking love this one. So like, which is funny. Cause again, I didn't expect this one to be the thing that was like, oh yes, because I am a sucker for a pink bitch. But the fact that I just kind of had to keep building this up and building this up, it lost its flavor for me. And it just, I became less interested in it. This though this I could fuck with so yeah if you are interested in checking out this and you saw this and you look like me uncooked chicken and you're like I don't know how it's gonna fucking work try it I think you're gonna like it as a bronzer because I think it's just so fucking pretty so pretty I don't know I'm just so in love with this side of my face I cannot stop eye fucking myself in the monitor and I'm not gonna apologize for it because I love it so much <laughs> but this is great so if you were interested in picking this up I say get chip Chip is gonna surprise you. Mrs. Pot, you fucking have that. Don't even bother. You probably actually have a better pink in your collection, but Chip, you might not have Chip. Chip you might fuck with. So moving on to the next product, which is the highlighter. The special guest highlighter retails for $15. Get glowing with our bouncy tie-dye formula inspired by Cogsworth and Lumiere for gorgeous highlights. So this is a warm gold with a soft pink duochrome finish. And this is motherfucking blinding bitch. This is good. ColourPop has been killing it with their highlighters. Their liquid highlighter, like if you haven't seen Monday's video, go check it out. Fucking beautiful. Love the highlighter so much. It is just very strong and in your face and it's just an alien slut dream. And that's what this one is. It's so good. It's so fucking good. Love this. When it comes to these kind of highlighters, I love the feel of them. I love the feel of them. I love the look of them. And I often feel like they never work out for me because they're usually too dark for me. This is the first one in a long motherfucking time where I feel like this actually looks really good and it doesn't look like a stripe of bullshit on my skin. This is is a very beautiful like warm icy moment which I know is kind of a weird phrase to say because it's like icy you think icy you think cool and then warm obviously the fucking other way duh no shit but it kind of gives you like this really warm icy kind of princess moment the little bit of like that gold to pink duochrome is so like soft and subtle it's not like a crazy ass duochrome where you're gonna be like oh my god people are gonna think I'm from fucking outer space which there's nothing wrong with that by the way but you're not gonna have that kind of a vibe it's more of like a work appropriate duochrome chrome highlighter, if that makes sense. Like if I was going into the office and I knew I had a meeting, but I still wanted to look like a fucking bitch that commands the room, this would be something that I would wear because it's like, ooh, 
it gives you that little bit of extra, but also like, she's classy. <laughs> she doesn't say fuck every other second, you know, but we all know that I am a fucking trash box. But anyway, but the point is that this shit is good. This is a proper alien slut highlighter and it's just so, it's so soft and beautiful and lovely. Like I, I can't say a fucking bad thing about it. And I really do love that it goes with both of the blush colors. Well, granted the pink side is uh, definitely on the lighter side. It still pairs very, very well, but I think it looks so much more beautiful with the dark blush. I don't know, it's just, kind of gives you like dimension without it just being too much. Again, a work appropriate alien slut. Like this is great. Now this definitely has a little bit of glitter to it, but the glitter is not emphasizing any sort of texture or any kind of bullshit. So you don't feel like it's a problem, which is good. I know a lot of people don't like glitter in their highlighters, myself included, or if there is glitter, like it has to be a very, very small amount where it doesn't emphasize texture or just basically make you look kind of like you fucked around in a joke. Joanne's craft store, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you got into a fucking brawl and then you came out with all this bullshit craft glitter glued to your face. Like I'm so thankful that it's not like that. So yes, this is a work appropriate alien slut highlighter. It gives you a little bit of edge because of the duochrome, but it's not too much where it feels like it's one of those highlighters that are just, you know, can be worn like on special occasions, whatever the fuck that means. Okay. <laughs> In my world, it's multi-chrome or nothing, but <laughs> whatever. Everyone has their preferences. Now, according to the website, it looks like this is sold out, but you still can pick it up if you purchase the full collection. So if this is something that interests you, I don't know if it is going to be restocked. I hope it is because it's actually pretty fucking good. But if it's not, you can still pick it up if you get the full collection. So anyway, this is fucking great. And again, ColourPop is just killing it with their highlighters. And I, I want them to continue this because this is what I need. I need more of this, less bullshit and more of this, please. Thank you. So let's talk about the eyeshadow palette. The Beauty and the Beast eyeshadow palette retails for $24. Take a waltz in the ballroom with 12 soft neutrals and all shimmering golds inspired by Belle's dress and the classic Disney film. A must for Disney fans create endless enchanting looks with matte metallic matte sparkle and pearlescent glitter finishes. I like this eyeshadow palette but I wish they would just stop it with the fucking pearlescent finishes. The pearlescent glitter finishes is like the upgraded pressed glitter shade and while I do appreciate that it's definitely a little bit better it's still like kind of too chunky but not it's weird it's like it's chunky but almost like a sandpaper texture where I feel like it can be a little bit more dangerous because the fallout for those are a little bit more on the sharper side. So if you are someone like me who has sensitive eyes, that shit gets up in your eyeball, you are fucked for the rest of the day, okay? No matter how much little eye drops you use, you're just gonna still look like you smoked a lot of fucking weed. Like it just doesn't look right. So when I saw this palette, I was like, ooh, ooh, ah. And then when I noticed that forbidden shade, which is this guy right here, I was like, oh fuck, which is sucks because it looks like a beautiful shade, but swatch wise, it feels uncomfortable, rough texture, like sandpaper. There's no way I'm putting that shit near my eye. So for me, right off the bat, there's one shade that I'm not gonna be using. The rest of the palette, the rest of the palette I could fuck with. Yes, this is a neutral Nelly, but the whole kind of color palette I feel like from Beauty and the Beast is pretty much very neutral. And I like that there are different types of golds in this palette that resembles Belle's dress. I feel like they did a really good job here. And I also love this dark blue down here. It makes me think of the Beast's like little coat. Like it's cute. This is definitely one of the nicer IP palettes I feel like. And again, I feel like it totally makes sense to the color palette of the movie. Agree or disagree, but that's what I fucking think. Anyway, I created two different eye looks with this palette and I really wanted to focus on the colors that I felt like, you know, can be a little bit more difficult to make, like the dark blue, like the yellow, for example. Now I could have been a basic ass bitch, use the bronze shade, the gold shade, or like the pinky champagne shade, but we all know they're gonna look good. Those are the shades that no matter what the fuck you do, you're always gonna look like a million bucks. It's always gonna look beautiful. They're just one of those shades. They're super common. They are like the staples in everybody's collection. If you wanna have a nice eye look, like you're gonna use those. So I had no interest in making things simple today. <laughs> I wanted to be as difficult as fucking possible. And I really do like the eye looks that I created. The only thing that I did differently um, with the blue side is I think uh, when you see how I created the look, I used the blue eyeliner, but I actually went over it with a little bit of silver because after a little bit of time, I felt like it just looked, I don't know, like too like bruised. So I added a little bit of silver just to kind of lighten it up. And I, I really do like how this looks. Um, so anyway, so I use a fair amount. Actually, I use all of the matte shades in this palette. The mattes are great. They're good. They're solid. They're consistent 
consistent with other ColourPop mattes, although I will say the shade Beast did require a little bit extra building up because I felt like there was a little bit of issue with patchiness. I feel like I kind of still see it a little bit just in my crease area, just like right there. But like the rest of it, I don't notice it. But just right there, I kind of notice like a little bit of skipping. So that is not like my favorite thing, but I feel like it's something that can be fixed. I just need to like add a little bit more and not blend it out too much. Like it's one of those shades where you kind of just like have to pack it on and just like leave it be and just pray that everything fucking works out well. I thought the shade Kind Hearted was really nice as well. Like I really did like blending the shade Beast as well as Break the Curse, especially like the outer edges with that shade. Although it got to the point where I felt like that particular shade, the Kind Hearted one was maybe a little bit too dark for my skin tone. So I kind of kept going in with my setting powder that obviously is like fucking paper <laughs> to make things look a little bit softer. So I kind of wish that maybe there was, I don't know, like a white shade or something Thing, just a little bit lighter to kind of diffuse some of the edges because if you are like me, uncooked chicken, that could be a smidge too dark. I could feel like this is a great base shade. Like when I look at some of these colors, I'm like, this is kind of like one of those palettes where you just like throw on really quickly and then you just run out and do your shit. It's a reliable palette, which I like. The things that actually surprise me are the mattes with sparkles. Now, normally I think those shades are bullshit. They are so stupid in my eyes because it just creates unnecessary glitter bukkake at the end of the day. And nobody has time for that. Who has time for that? Nobody, okay? So why make a matte shade with just stupid ass rogue sparkles that are gonna be floating around your face where it looks like you fucking ate a fairy's ass out. Nobody wants that. And I fucking hate these shades, but I actually like these though. Cause I feel like even with a little bit of sparkle, it's not too much. Like I didn't feel like it was kind of going all over the place. I didn't really notice any kind of extreme fallout with the exception of the dinner invite shade, which I feel like is kind of par for the course. Anytime you see like a really dark navy, navy blue like this, you're gonna have to deal with some fallout. It's just inevitable. Even with a little bit of fallout, it was incredibly easy to clean. I don't really notice like these rogue glitter bukkake sparkles. So that's fucking amazing. I love the yellow. I think the yellow is super pretty. It's very dainty. Do I wish it was like maybe a little more yellow, just a scotch, just a tiny bit, but it's a yellow that actually shows up. Yes, you do have to kind of build it up a little bit, but the bitch does show up. And I think there's something to be said about all matte looks. And I actually kind of love that I can create actually a lot of all matte looks with this palette. It was really, really nice. Again, I think it's going to pair very beautifully with most of the shimmers with the exception of this one, because this one can go fuck itself. But the rest of the shimmers I feel like are going to pair very, very nicely with these mattes. Now, when it comes to the shimmers, I only really kind of use Book Lover as well as Belle, because again, like I said before, I didn't want to use something that I know was going to look good. Like, no, I wanted to use the duochromes. <laughs> they're okay. Like, they're fine. They're, there's nothing wrong with them, right? Like, I'm not mad about them or anything like that. But when I think of like indie brands who just really specialize in all these beautiful special shadows like duochromes or multichromes, ColourPop is still fucking, you know, light years behind everybody else. Sometimes, Sometimes they'll come out with a fucking banger and you're like, oh my God, where the fuck have you been? But they are so few and far between. A lot of the times, especially with these IP palettes, they're often very weak, the duochromes. Like it kind of makes you question like, is it a duochrome? Like, I don't even know what the fuck I'm seeing. Like honestly with the blue one, I think what made it more of a duochrome for me is kind of combining both of these colors. And I feel like now I made it a proper duochrome, but like on its own though, I was like, oh, it just looks like a nice shimmer shade. Now, when I pair both of them together, I like them. I think they're very, very pretty. I really do, again, I do like this eye look. It's a little funky, it's a little out there, but I could fuck with it. I could totally see myself running errands with this eye look, I like it. Or having multiple meetings today, I'm fine with that. But I just want more, I don't know. Like I'm waiting for ColourPop to kind of just step up their pussies when it comes to these shadows. Like, okay, you got the mats down, cool, good, good, good. And when it comes to the Super Shock, bitch, you're selling it. I love it, I'm fucking here for you. But when it comes to your like powder formula for the duochromes, ooh. They could be better. So if you did pick this up, rest assured, you're gonna still get very beautiful looks with this palette. You're not going to be mad about it, but I think if you own a lot of indie brands or actually any brand that just kind of has like a proper duochrome, you're gonna see the difference. You're gonna be like, oh, oh. You know what I mean? It's kind of like one of those things. It's definitely not the worst ColourPop palette I have ever tried. And I could definitely see myself using it again. But if I like think about like my favorite one, which is like the Limoncello palette, like this is one that I could fucking just use 
all the time, all the time. It's so fucking good. It's so good. And no lie, like when I first saw the Beauty and the Beast palette, I got excited, but then I immediately thought of the Limoncello palette. So I was like, it kind of has a, maybe a little bit of a similar vibe, especially with some of the mattes and um, a couple of the golder shades. Obviously I choose Limoncello over the Beauty and the Beast one, but if you didn't pick this one up though, I feel like this is kind of like, kind of comparable in that way. So if you can't find this, which I don't think they even make this anymore, this can be kind of like a nice filler palette, but it's, it's not this though. Like this is like A and this is kind of like a mm, C plus. That's kind of how I feel about it. If you did get it, you're not gonna be disappointed. You're not gonna be mad. You're still gonna create beautiful things with it, but I don't think it's like the best fucking thing out there. So kind of has up there. So yeah, my biggest complaint, they need to get rid of this pearlescent glitter finish shades. Like it's fucking done. It's a wrap, get over it. I don't want to see it anymore. Or at least fine tune it where it doesn't feel like sandpaper and it's going to basically cut open my eyeball. And please work on the duochromes, work on the special shades. You know, like I love the price point. I love where you guys are at with it, but I need something more. I need something more. So yeah, good, not great. And then the last thing we have are the lip duos. There are two lip duos that retail for $21 a piece. Each lip duo comes with a luxe lipstick and an ultra glossy lip. Great Adventure is a cool pink lip duo inspired by Belle. Break the Spell is a royal brown lip duo fit for a princess. So if you are new here, I'm usually very critical. <laughs> usually, I'm usually very critical when it comes to lip products from ColourPop because I feel like for the longest time, ColourPop just was not delivering with their lip products. It often had like some weird waxy texture or it just felt uncomfortable or just had no longevity or it just got gummy and blah, 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 blah. It was all bullshit. These are very good. So they're Luxe lipsticks. I don't know if I think they revamped their formula over the past like year or two or so. They're good. They're creamy. They're delectable. They're delicious. They have really good longevity. They don't feel like they kind of bunch into the outer corners and get all fucked up and like hard chunks and stuff like that. Everything is just perfect. They're so good. Now I do love both of these colors, but even more than that, I actually like combining both of them because I am a basic bitch that loves a good real estate pink, loves a good real estate pink, but also loves a good brown color. I think when I combine them, oof, fuck me up. Like I'm in love. And I kind of almost wish that this was the shade, but it's not. Uh, but the fact that I can create that is good. So I'll take it. I think these are awesome. I don't have a problem at all with the lipsticks. Now, when it comes to the lip gloss, they're good. Not my favorite though. While the gloss is thick, it's not super sticky. I just feel like it fucks up the longevity of the lipstick. It feels like it kind of eats the lipstick to the point where it's no longer is shiny. It, it still is very like nourishing and hydrating, but it just looks like I ate a bunch of stuff and I need to kind of reapply. So I feel like these are kind of like lipstick eaters a little bit. And I know sometimes gloss does that. Thankfully, the gloss that I have been loving lately doesn't do that and actually doesn't eat the fucking lipstick. <laughs> but these, I always kind of, I don't know, like this is probably like one of my least favorite lip products from ColourPop. Like it looks fine now, but I, through the course of this video, which actually is not even taking me that long to record, I feel like I've had to touch up my lips four times. That's kind of a problem. So like, I wish they sold the lipstick separately because I don't think there's anything like really remarkable about the gloss. Eh, they're okay, but again, do you really want a product that you're going to have to constantly keep babying and it's only been like a half an hour? Granted, I'm talking a lot. I can't shut the fuck up, but like, it shouldn't be like this though. So like, I don't love this again. I wish it was just a lipstick. I'll even take a fucking lip liner and I hate lip liners. I'd rather have the lip liner than the gloss. Or if they had like the little lip stains or the like lip cremes, I could fuck with those. But I just think the glossy lip is just, it's not where it is. I think there's so many better glosses on the market and lip oils and stuff that just have, I don't know, a better relationship when it comes to pairing over lipstick. It doesn't feel like I have to constant ring of bullshit that I need to keep touching up. It's just, it's super fucking annoying. So yeah, don't love that. So listen, if you got the full collection, I think overall you're gonna be happy with it because all of these products are pretty decent. They're pretty good. There's nothing that was like really fucking like, oh, I can't like, you should throw this shit in the fucking fire. Like it's terrible. Maybe with the exception of the gloss. But still then, it's not the worst gloss I've ever tried, okay? But still. It's not bad, but I think if you were only gonna pick up one or two, I think the best things to get, 
the lip mask. Get the brown blush, get the brown blush. It's so fun and it's so different and it's probably something you don't even have. So I say get that, get the highlighter. If you can, oh, I really hope this comes back in the stock because this is fucking great. And dare I say even the, the palette, the palette's not that bad. If you missed out on Limoncello, this is probably the closest thing that you're gonna get. So fine, you, you fucking twisted my arm, get that. The lip duos, um, I think for $21, mm -mm. <laughs> no, no. I don't know. I just don't think it's worth the money for that one. So I would say probably skip out on that. But if you did get the whole set, and see, that's the funny thing. It's like, it's not a shit product, but I just think it's like so weak in comparison to the other ones. So if I had to rate this whole collection, I would give it a solid B minus. I think there are some really good parts about it. I think there are some parts that I'm like, eh, could be better. Why did you include this? I want something else. Like <laughs> we had those moments here, but overall, it's not bad. This is definitely one of the better IP collections. And if you missed out on Limoncello, there is something to be said about the palette. It's just watch out for that pesky, stupid fucking pearlescent glitter that will cut your eyeball out of your head. But yeah, seriously, the lip mask is really cute. The brown blush is great. Fucking highlighter, half of the lip duo. It's not bad. This actually wasn't a bad collection, um, but I would love now to hear from y'all. If you are interested in any of this shit, let me know down below because I love hearing from you. And also what's your favorite Disney movie? And what is a Disney collection that you would would like to see like a Disney makeup collection because I'm pretty sure it will probably happen. <laughs> Although I kind of feel like at this point, there are a lot of like repeat offender, a lot of repeat collections. So I kind of, I don't know, I'm hoping that if we do continue to get more Disney shit, which we all know we will because they're hurting for money. Uh, <laughs> I hope we get, I don't know, some better IPs. I want a Toy Story one. Even though it makes no sense, I kind of want a Toy Story one. So what do you want? Nothing? Great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my pumpkins, that's all I got. Thank you so much to my patrons and my beautiful YouTube members for keeping this garbage boat afloat. I love your face and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.